Welcome back to FinTech Hawaii's Human Humane Architecture. And this is 2017. Welcome. This is my first show this year. And I have to say, with this first show, my New Year's resolution is already fulfilled, mission completed. Because I have someone on the show for us today who I have tried to get on the show for years. This traces back to the good old um, Urban Transcendence show days, and she had always turned me down. And this first time in 2016, I, I was successful. And I will share with you uh, who she is, the way I got to know her. And I only got to know her as uh, Kaili Chun initially. And she was sitting in front of me when I was in the classroom. And I tried to teach her materiality. And I walked her through the different categories. And if we could get picture one, um, little did I know, because as humble as she is, she didn't share with me anything. She was just sitting first row and taking notes, as a best student does it. So she has experience in, uh, I would call it probably insufficiently, traditional materiality of an artist of acetate and blood in this case. You want to share a little bit about that? Well, this p particular piece, Martin, was um, in response to a show that was being hosted by the University of Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And I was in graduate school at that time. And uh, we were hosting uh, a number of French artists mm -hmm. uh, that were showing at the, East, uh, the main gallery. But at the same time, the French government was um, uh, experimenting with uh, nuclear weapons or mm. nuclear uh, bombs mm. um, in the Pacific Ocean mm -hmm. and so this was a little bit of a response to that particular action mm -hmm. um, and uh, we know that all the fish migrate around the Pacific Ocean so whatever you know we're testing um, in one part of the Pacific you know doesn't necessarily stay in that part of the Pacific so this was um, uh, a reflection on everything that's happening in the Pacific mm -hmm. Basin uh, area. And the, each little acetate wa has a, a little name on it. Mm -hmm. And that name uh, reflected the, an island mm -hmm. that exists mm -hmm. in the Pacific Ocean. And so um, the palu, or the blood, the fish blood, uh, I used to adhere the acetate onto um, the walls of the gallery. And wow. it's just a reflection on, and a questioning of our own action, mm -hmm. you know, and how we impact others mm -hmm. uh, without really, you know, noting it or mm -hmm. acknowledging our impact okay. on the world because of our actions wow. yeah, in a certain way. And I labeled that first picture with a materiality category blood mm -hmm. in, a, in, in two ways, because you also never talked about your ancestry and who you are genetically. You want to share that as well a little bit? So I'm Native Hawaiian and uh, born and raised in Hawaii, Honolulu in particular, and also uh, part German mm -hmm. and uh, part English. Mm -hmm. Uh, so part Chinese mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So um, a mixture as most um, people here in Hawaii are, mm -hmm. uh, but very grateful for who I am and who my parents are and uh, my genealogy uh, and my connection to this land is very important. And that's um, an aspect I think that really informs my work. Uh, true, you know. truly does. Yeah. Throughout. And let's, let's show another piece that's number two, and I titled that Glass. So I mm -hmm. try to teach you about glass as well, but <laughs> there we go. Little did I know, you know it all. So this project No, no, is... no, no. I do not know it all. This <laughs> is do. just, these are just uh, glass containers or glass jars, glass bottles uh, that are used uh, for food. Um, so in, in, in essence, um, preserving uh, what we make mm -hmm. and uh, whether it, it was uh, you know spaghetti sauce or mayonnaise or pickles um, a variety of bottles that we use to um, preserve these foodstuffs mm -hmm. that we use to sustain ourselves however um, in this case this 
particular piece was a collaboration between another um, uh, artist, uh, Nicole Sue was her name, or is her, is her name, and um, both of us are from Hawaii, born and raised, uh, but there's an issue of what is Hawaiian and what is not. Mm -hmm. So it's not, you know, w when you're dealing with um, Hawaii, it's not like a California or New York. Oh, born and raised in New York, you're native mm -hmm. to that area. Not the case here. For us, Native Hawaiian or Hawaiian, um, you have to be of the blood. Mm -hmm. So you have to, um, your genealogy needs to be traced back mm -hmm. before contact. Mm -hmm. And that's what, you know, distinguishes us as, as Hawaiians. Mm -hmm. So you can't just be born here mm -hmm. and be called a Hawaiian. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and, and, you know, we feel very strongly about that because our, our land has been taken away from us mm -hmm. and our identity, when somebody says that they're born and raised here and they're Hawaiian, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's, it's also another reach into taking <coughs> another aspect of our identity away mm -hmm. from us. Mm -hmm. So. And, and your work addresses that in yes. a very, uh, I would say, non-dogmatic way, <laughs> which I appreciate a lot. So maybe number three, uh, mm -hmm. which I subtitled Stone for obvious reasons, mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. it's part of that. So this piece is called Nalkavai, and we have uh, 40 stones that have been uh, drilled into, and an inset or a pico um, has been placed into it. So there's an image. You can remove the, the pico from the stone. It's llama wood. Uh, if anyone is familiar with Kapaa Lama, um, it used to be a place where you could find llama wood. Mm -hmm. And I have certain phrases or dates or proverbs that have been um, uh, engraved into the pico. Mm -hmm. And then a corresponding image uh, is inset mm -hmm. into these stones. Mm -hmm. And so Nalgavai is, uh, translates to the choice belongs to you. So what choice do we make? Mm -hmm. um, we have every, every choice that we make impacts another mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. It doesn't just resonate with, yeah. with ourselves. So it's an interactive Absolutely. way of working and yeah. reaching out mm -hmm. to people. And starting discussions, mm -hmm. um, conversations about uh, the issues that, uh, you know, are impacting mm -hmm. us today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the next project is a concrete project. Mm -hmm. This project was, um, it was created to commemorate the Native Hawaiian students, particularly from Kamehameha schools mm -hmm. that um, were used to occupy certain islands, um, the Line Islands in particular, and so they're the northwestern, you know, Hawaiian islands. And um, it was about uh, this, you know, colonizing, you know, kind of um, uh, endeavor on, on behalf of America. Mm -hmm. uh, but utilizing Hawaiians because they could survive. Mm -hmm. You know, they could fish, they could mm -hmm. catch birds, they could, um, you know, uh, live without mm -hmm. uh, contact for months on end. And so that was done in commemoration of the sacrifices that mm -hmm. they made, mm -hmm. but also to, um, you know, think about, you know, wh why it was necessary to do so, mm -hmm. um, to, you know, it was mm -hmm. World War. Mm -hmm. So. Indeed. And um, you were hiding more things from me. <laughs> <laughs> and there's another category that we don't have an illustration, but I would like to touch on it verbally, which, because you had some previous education at the east coast of the mainland at a pretty prestigious school <laughs> and also studied another particular material under a very special person. So, yes, I was fortunate enough to um, be educated at Princeton University. And I, uh, my undergraduate degrees in architecture, um, I was, <laughs> I was there during Michael Graves um, and his tenure there, so it was, uh, it was a wonderful experience. It was mm -hmm. amazing. Mm -hmm. Really loved it. Um, and then I also uh, was able to um, uh, 
be tutored or uh, I, I took a couple of classes from Toshiko Takayezu, mm -hmm. um, you know, famous ceramicist mm -hmm. from here, mm -hmm. Japanese, uh, local girl, but um, uh, very grateful for the experience um, and the warm and warmth and welcoming that she gave me in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, mm -hmm. we, we became mm -hmm. lifelong friends. Mm -hmm. And I am very grateful for her family that lives here mm -hmm. today mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And we have, and there are more categories because you had to narrow it down to sort of an essence. But the last one we're going to touch on, the second to last one, is one that also is related to another very yep. uh, important mentor of yours, and that's the materiality of wood. Mm -hmm. And if we can have that yeah. illustrate that. So this is um, a piece that I did for the Emperor of Japan on his last uh, most recent visit to Hawaii. It was given um, on behalf of the Japan American Society mm -hmm. uh, to him and uh, it was an honor to create this piece. It's a, a model or rep replica uh, based on uh, the Hokulea mm -hmm. and of course the Hokulea is going around almost finished with their, mm -hmm. their around the world mm -hmm. tour. Mm -hmm. but. Um, Mr. Bowman, Wright Bowman Sr., uh, I was his last apprentice uh, until he passed, and I was very fortunate to learn uh, my woodworking skills from Mr. Bowman. Mm -hmm. And um, lucky that I get to uh, live in his house mm -hmm. now and mm -hmm. work out of his studio. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, it's been uh, an incredible <coughs> learning experience for me, mm -hmm. and I'm just uh, grateful for those people, mm -hmm. um, for for all of them that have uh, touched my life in mm -hmm. such a profound mm -hmm. way. In mm -hmm. saying that, including I was, you, no, <laughs> so nice of you. But the other <laughs> way around, I was thinking there must be more who makes you that very special person that you are. <laughs> and you were hiding that as well, but also you weren't very successful at that point, less than with the previous things, because whenever I get out of uh, Hawaii and back in, there's a little uh, display at the airport that gives a little clue about who else you are, and can we get image six, and I know it was, makes you blush, but you have to live through this. Uh, many years ago. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Many years ago, um, but swimming was really good to me. Uh, it uh, afforded me uh, travel uh, across the earth, and mm -hmm. um, very grateful for those experiences. And uh, discipline, um, routine, and um, challenge. Mm -hmm. So uh, it it was a gr big part of my life. Mm -hmm. um, this was in the picture. It refers to the rough water swim, but I, I swam uh, nationally and internationally. We're um, talking Olympics. You're just so humble. Oh, no, no, no. Not <laughs> Olympics, but national teams. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I represented uh, United States of America See? Um, so in humble. several. <laughs> 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 so, so with that, we're going to take that little break, and mm -hmm. uh, when we come back, um, we're going to share when all came out. <laughs> <laughs> See you then. Thank you. Aloha. My name is John Waihe, and I actually had a small part to do with what's happening today. Served, actually, in public office. But if you don't already know that, here's a chance to learn more about what's happening in our state by joining me for Talk Story with John Waihe every other Monday. Thank you, and I look forward to your seeing us in the future. Okay, I'm here with Brent Obergaard of the Faculty of the School of Journalism in the Department of Communications at UH Manoa. We've had a number of shows. We have a movable feast going on, and we talk about journalism, we talk about language, we talk about communication in general, and we talk about the effect of that on the country and on individual people. Brent, it's so good to, to be able to discuss this with you in our movable feast. Oh, it's my pleasure. This is a great opportunity. You'll have to come back again and again, okay? Deal? Uh, that's the deal. Red Oprah God. I'm Jay Fidel. We care about everything. Thanks. <laughs> so we're back with Kaylee Chun, and as promised, we're going to share how it all came out. Because at that time, when we, I did my best to try to teach you something, and I should have known, you should have taught me. Mm -mm -mm. There was an exhibit yeah, coming up. 
<laughs> and uh, the picture seven, it was published uh, here in the Star Advertiser uh, in the arts uh, chapter there. And uh, the next picture is uh, one that I took <laughs> at uh, the exhibit in the II Gallery. EE. EE, -E, sorry, EE -E Gallery, yes, mm -hmm. uh, which is now the Agora or, or is not anymore. Yeah, you know, right. And, Kaka and so, so here you are uh, in front of, at that time, um, uh, very current work. And it's still current because it's in my mind all the time, which is love that piece. <laughs> And that is also in this little lecture here of materiality that segues us into the materiality of steel. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. tell us about Veritas. So Veritas is a piece that I did for 24 hours. Um, so it was a, you know, pop-up, quote-unquote, mm -hmm. exhibition. And it was held at Waimanalo Beach. And I have 50 steel cells that measure 8 inches by eight inches square mm -hmm. by eight feet tall. Mm -hmm. So not quite uh, large enough for a human body to fit into, but um, you know, of human scale. Mm -hmm. And the, the reason that I placed these 50 cells, first of all, it, the, the steel cells were originally meant to represent the other, mm -hmm. um, meaning the colonizer, mm -hmm. the commodifier of mm -hmm. our culture, mm -hmm. United States of America, mm -hmm. you know, that sort of thing. Um, but when I placed them on the beach, um, over time, over that 24-hour period, it um, changed from, from that to representations of us, mm -hmm. of, of um, Hawaiians. Mm -hmm. um, they became silent sentinels. Um, calling out to the ancestors, mm -hmm. um, saying that, you know, we are here and we are present and we are part of, uh, you know, today's world as well as tomorrow's mm -hmm. world mm -hmm. as well as yesterday's mm -hmm. world. Um, and uh, I had a lot of help, you know, with this. In particular, my, um, my former student, now assistant, mm -hmm. Nicholas Bright, mm -hmm. who has become my, you know, partner essentially in in creating art mm -hmm. and I, I want to recognize him because he's been uh, a, a big part of yeah. um, my creation yeah. and so we we made these not all of them um, but we, we needed to make 50 of them mm -hmm. and we put them on Waimanalo Beach because uh, it's a very Hawaiian community mm -hmm. except uh, the beach ho homes are not owned by Hawaiians. Mm -hmm. You know, primarily they're non-Hawaiian owned. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them are not necessarily occupied. Mm -hmm. So people don't necessarily live yeah. them, mm -hmm. live in them mm -hmm. year round. Mm -hmm. um, so you have, I just wanted to take a little bit of that space mm -hmm. and occupy mm -hmm. it um, in front of homes that were not occupied, mm -hmm. but are owned yeah. by non-Hawaiians who are in, you know, front of, mm -hmm. you know, Hawaiian homelands, mm -hmm. which is across the highway. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and, uh, and if we can maybe just mm -hmm. see the pictures, uh, sort of walk through uh, until including 16. And yeah. I want to say, um, this is really, for me, sort of a very activist project. I mm -hmm. mean, you, you said it very politely as you are, but this was sort of an illegal, almost illegal. You oh, should yeah, have asked yeah, for yeah. permission. Right, and right. You had some friend who was somewhere <laughs> in the authorities and you <laughs> kind of checked to test it, but officially no. there was no. You no just permit. said, you said, you know, this is my beach, this mm -hmm. is our beach, mm -hmm. and, and yeah. we can do that. Yeah. And the other thing I want to mention is that your art, I experienced as someone not from here, how art on the island has become very, very literal. Mm. Yeah. And, and your art is so refreshingly, the opposite is figuratively. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it has such, you know, a multitude of meanings. I mean, you could just look at this mm -hmm. as, as land art or water mm -hmm. art in mm -hmm. that case, right? Yeah. Sort yeah. of like Anthony Gormley, you know, mm -hmm. in, in a way. Mm -hmm. He had an exhibit at Cuxhaven in Germany um, mm -hmm. where we had a little vacation rental. But we're Germans, <laughs> so we're okay to have that. <laughs> and so then with the tide, you know, going higher and lower, they were either, you know, almost yeah. submerged in the water. Yep. You can look at it that way. You can look at it also in many other ways. And I want to point out to a little detail, which mm -hmm. we can see. Mm -hmm. Some of the cages have little gates at the very top, and, yep. and they're locks. Yep. And the locks are open. Mm -hmm. 
So this is sort of on, on the opposite end. If, if you want to know more, if you want to dig deeper, you once again get a very critical message, but you don't throw this message into everyone's face and saying you need to you know, face that criticism. You can right. actually look at that in a purely aesthetical, very pleasing, absolutely stunningly beautiful way, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or you can think more about it if you want and you encourage, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And, and maybe tell a little bit more about that detail at the very top of the gate. Well, it is, you know, uh, a, a welcoming, you know, let's open, let's open the door mm -hmm. and, you know, have a conversation. Let's sit down mm -hmm. and, and talk mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. who you are and who I am mm -hmm. and, you know, what unites us what yeah. are our shared values, yeah. but also what distinguishes, yeah, yeah. you know, ourselves from each yeah. other. That makes it really interesting, makes yeah. life interesting. Um, and I also saw it as a, as a very, you're not afraid of um, discourses, critical discourses. Mm -hmm. I also read it as to say, well, yes, we got imprisoned, we got conquered, we got annexed. <laughs> but it's up to us now to break out of this, yeah, right? Exactly. I mean, there are certain circumstances we, we cannot change, right. but there are others we can change. Mm -hmm. So it's an encouragement mm -hmm. to your own culture and saying, let's not just whine and, mm -hmm. and exactly. be sad all the time or be mad. Right. Let's turn it into something constructive and positive, which yes. your work embodies so perfectly. Absolutely. And, and that's what Veritas was all about um, in terms of you know, not only commenting on the history of what happened to mm -hmm. us, mm -hmm. um, but also, you know, it's a call out to my own people to mm -hmm. say, okay, you know, are, are, how are we complicit mm -hmm. in, in this mm -hmm. um, colonizing and commodification of our own culture? Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, how are we addressing, you know, that mm -hmm. particular issue? Um, you know, in, in this particular situation, I mean, you know, there are people that drive on the beach. Mm -hmm. you With know. the ATVs in that case, right? Didn't <laughs> yeah. they come the next morning? <laughs> yeah. To try to tell you something? Well, you know, I mean, I don't think that's a, you know, very pono. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's a very proper way to uh, Aloha Aina. Mm -hmm. And so when you, somebody is talking about Aloha Aina, well, then let's practice it. Yeah. And, so the question um, was, whose beach is it, right? They said, it's our beach. We're going to ATV here. And you said, no, tonight it's my beach. Right. Because I'm going to have this installation that makes you think. About right? what you're doing. Exactly. And why you're doing it. Awesome. Yeah. Let's, so. We could talk about that so much <laughs> more, but we want to get to the last four pictures, mm -hmm. uh, which is your very recent, very fresh work. Mm -hmm. You're more, almost resistant to say, I don't have it photographed correctly. Right. These pictures we just saw were also by a very famous uh, photographer, <laughs> friend of yours, Rod Veritas. <laughs> so this is, has yet to come with you, but um, I'm happy you're, you're, you were okay in, in, in mm -hmm, sharing mm -hmm. these. And, and this is for me amazing because Veritas and this project for me are in some ways almost the total opposite, but then they're obviously you and so they're very much the same as well, but it's amazing. So please share well, where and what it yes. is. Yes, this is uh, Hulali Ikala and it is, uh, for me, it's a very um, important project because it became a people's project. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, it's a commission for the Hawaii Prince Hotel, mm -hmm. uh, soon to be known as Prince Waikiki. Mm -hmm. And um, it involved uh, over 400 employees of the Prince Hotel. Mm -hmm. And so each individual copper hinana, it's based on, I guess the whole piece is based on um, the original narrative of the land. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, the Pi'inayo stream used to flow through that area, and with that stream came the Hinana, or the baby O'opu. And this is before Alawai Canal, this is before the Yacht Harbor. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we don't necessarily know that it was there before, but we're trying to bring back the stories of the original land. Mm -hmm. And so before it was the hotel, before it was Kaiser Hospital, mm -hmm. it was this Muliwai. Mm -hmm. And so the texture, the form, the shape, it, it, this, this all is, uh, culminates in Hulali Kala, which mm -hmm. translates to uh, glistening or shimmering in the sun. Mm -hmm. And 
it's really a testament to the community. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's, it's mm -hmm. very different to have community work mm -hmm. in a hotel. Mm -hmm. And so that is another layer yeah. of, you know, quote unquote, like subversion mm -hmm. to a certain mm -hmm. extent. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it, so each individual Hinana is uh, stamped with a number. Mm -hmm. So we know exactly where the location is. Mm -hmm. And it's also, hand hammered by an individual mm -hmm. and or their uh, family member and it's also um, they have their names mm -hmm. uh, or mm -hmm. in their message mm -hmm. stamped into it so in exchange we gave them a map mm -hmm. and we circled the location of where their piece is so mm -hmm. they know exactly where it is and whenever we had a hammering session we um, uh, we exchanged uh, information mm -hmm. as well. So mm -hmm. just very small snippets of information yeah. that we felt were very important. One is the lunar phase. Mm -hmm. Two, uh, if, whether it, it was good for fishing, lava'i'a, or uh, mahi'ai, agriculture. Mm -hmm. You know, everything that, that was very important to Hawaiians. Wow. And I, so... I think we got to do another show I, about that project because no, we no. run out of time. <laughs> That's okay. But can we have the last picture because I want to conclude um, sharing with the audience that actually you had different subtitles and I'm insisting, and you, you got it all cut down to artists, but I insist on adding educator and even more provocative, I insist on, on saying architect. And no, I no. even heard out of our producer room saying she doesn't think she's an architect. You are. We, we believe that. You're an awesome no, architect. No, no, you're no. the most awesome architect on the island. No, no, no. And, no. and you're inclusive and you're global. And uh, the last picture with the Bud Light truck is that um, I was just walking to the grocery store back home in Germany and, and I saw a Kona longboard, which I found a little absurd. As absurd as it is that here, uh, locals have adopted a Belgian beer, Heineken, Heineken. as their local beer. <laughs> So this is you. Whenever we get together, we drink that, right? <laughs> and that's for me a synonym and a metaphor. And, and once again, a reminder to thank you, Kaili, that you bring uh, uh, the world to Hawaii and you bring Hawaii to the world in the most beautiful way. Thank you, Martin. Thank you so much, my dear friend. It was a pleasure to have you. <laughs>